Hello, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content in Informa Pharma Insights. We're here at the Biotech Showcase uh, in San Francisco at the start of uh, 2017. Uh, it's a buzzing meeting and I'm joined by uh, Greg Madison, who's the CEO of um, uh, Kerix Biopharmaceuticals. Uh, Biopharmaceuticals. And well, well, this time last year, we, we, we met at, at, the, at this meeting and at that time you were describing the sort of the relaunch of uh, Orixia um, and you know that that was uh, an interesting story. So I thought what we could do is we could focus on okay. So how did that go? And you know what is the what you know what what are the next steps for for, for that product? Sure, sure. So thank you first for uh, having me here today. Excited to to speak to you about this as well. And yeah, we entered 2017 here at Carex Biopharmaceuticals with some very nice momentum coming out of the fourth quarter where Rixia is now once again available to patients and pharmacies out there in the marketplace. So we're excited about 2017 from an outlook perspective, again, coming off of a strong fourth quarter of 2016 in terms of uh, Rixia prescriptions, uh, puts us up, uh, sets us up in a, a very positive spot for potential in 2017. Uh, in addition to that, we recently just filed uh, an expanded application or an SNDA for Rixia to move into uh, treatment of iron deficiency anemia for patients on pre-dialysis. Uh, that has a significant amount of patients out there that are desperately in need for new treatment options for iron deficiency anemia. It's a, it's a large patient population relative to the dialysis spot and uh, that certainly uh, sets us up for uh, expand the indication for the product and actually making it available for many, many more patients compared to what we currently have today on the dialysis side. Uh, additionally, we've also expanded our management team. We've added a new chief operating officer and a new uh, chief business officer that really helps us think about executing our strategic plan to build a leading renal company. So what this allows us now to do is to increase the operational and strategic focus of the company to simultaneously make sure we execute on growing in dialysis, take advantage of the opportunity coming up in IDA, but also start to look for additional assets as we think about building the company. Right. So, so the uh, the sort of expanded uh, label that you're seeking. So. What needs to happen for you to actually achieve that? Sure. So uh, we, you know, we filed this application uh, based on the results of a phase three pivotal trial we did that we completed uh, last year. Um, in this trial, we studied uh, these patients that have pre-dialysis iron deficiency anemia and showcased that Orixia uh, can certainly increase iron stores as well as hemoglobin levels, which is the primary endpoint overall. So this study was met with very good success, where we hit not only statistical significance on the primary endpoint, but all key five pre-specified secondary endpoints. So that's the basis of the application. So now that it's been actually submitted to the FDA, uh, we'll start moving forward here. It'll likely be a 10-month review time period. So likelihood of a launch is really about, the, say, the late fourth quarter of 2017. Uh, as I mentioned before, from a patient perspective, uh, there's a really strong need uh, for new therapies in this area. Believe it or not, a product like the Rixia would be the first and only FDA-approved oral iron to treat iron deficiency anemia for these patients in pre-dialysis population. Uh, so in a near-term opportunity, there's about 650,000 patients today that are being seen by a nephrologist that are being treated for iron deficiency anemia. So that's a near-term opportunity that we can go after uh, right away. So, so as a product, this, this, this is going to be a game changer in terms of, you know, the sort of what it brings to your company? Yeah, for us, definitely, because today in the dialysis population, there's about 350,000 patients on dialysis that are currently taking phosphate binders. So that's the area that we operate today and talk to doctors about the benefits our medicine can bring to their patients. In the pre-dialysis side for iron deficiency anemia, it's kind of a two-staged approach. First, there's a near-term opportunity of the 650,000 patients I talked about earlier. There's also a market development opportunity where there's about a million more patients being seen by nephrologists today that we estimate based on market research about 250 to 400,000 likely have iron deficiency anemia but just simply aren't being treated today. So you combine the near-term opportunity of the 650 with you know 250 to 400,000 patients that could be a more of a market development opportunity you've got in essence about a million patients overall uh, that could be potential candidates for a product like Rixia. Okay now you mentioned also that um, I mean, you've, you've recently expanded the, uh, the sort of the management team and you're looking for new opportunities. What what sort of assets are you 
you know, uh, looking out for? Yeah, so we want to make sure that anything we do, we build off our kind of current core capability, which is really nephrology focused, yeah. right? And so we want to, don't want to take our eye off the ball there. And I think the, the expanded management team of hiring a chief operating officer as well as a chief business officer, it does two things for us. One is we have to make sure we continue to execute on our strategy to grow in dialysis and get ready to uh, take advantage of the expanded indication for iron deficient semia. This expanded team now allows us to do both, right? We can actually make sure that operationally we continue to focus on the near term, but also start to take a look at what might be out there in the nephrology world that might make sense for us and could be, you know, kind of value driving for the company. But again, we want to make sure we stay focused and leverage our core capabilities, which is nephrology. But are the assets, uh, assets that are already out there in the marketplace, or would you be looking to you know, take something that's in phase two and you know, yeah. put some uh, muscle behind it? Yeah, we haven't really you know, zeroed in on exactly which you know, type of phase of product. It could be commercial stage, product development stage. Whatever we do, again, we want to make sure that we don't stray too far from our current core capability, but also make sure that whatever we do, it's a value driving transaction. And. You know, yeah, what does what the what does the the um, the opportunity look like? I mean, are there lots of assets that you can actually? Uh be, be assessing? Yeah, yeah. Look, within the renal space, and our vision is to, to build a leading renal company, within the renal space, there are still lots of unmet needs out there. There's lots of interesting assets that are available out there for a while. So again, you know, we're going to start to look at that you know, in earnest as we think about building the company, but our near-term focus is really going on, driving growth and dialysis, and really making sure we have fully prepared for the opportunity coming up with iron deficient anemia. As I mentioned, that is a big, big, you know, it's a big patient population. There's lots of patients and needs, we have to make sure we execute on that. So yeah, while we'll think about building the company, adding other assets, the majority of our focus is on the near term with growth and dialysis and IDA. Right. And I saw that you, uh, you've had a new addition to, to your family as sort of uh, a, a baby. So apart from uh, the baby, what, what, what keeps you awake at night? Yeah, uh, look, I mean, I get into this, into this business, you know, many, many years ago, and what, what motivates me is just bringing innovative medicines to patients that are in need, right? I think with a product like Erixia, what brought me to the company is uh, a product like Erixia, I think, checks two of those boxes. First, in the dialysis opportunity, it's a differentiated product, and I really do think it provides a unique value to patients that are out there. Uh, and in the pre-dialysis side, you know, again, to be the first and only FDA-approved oral iron to treat these patients that are suffering from anemia, I mean, these symptoms are this is a really uh, detrimental disease that has a big, big quality of life effect in these patients. These are patients that, to say they're tired or fatigued doesn't really do it. There are some patients that suffer from anemia that literally cannot make it up a flight of stairs, right? So to be able to potentially bring a medicine to these patients that just are in need of new therapies right now, um, that's what really keeps me up at night. It keeps me motivated and just thinking about all the ways we continue to operate our business, expand our opportunities, and really you know, bring these medicines to the patients. That's what motivates me and keeps me up at night in a bold positive sense and also thinking about all the things we need to do to, uh, to get out there. There's just never enough time in the day. So, you know, at the same time the Biotech Showcase, the JP Morgan uh, meeting is taking place. So, so you're here, you're, you're presenting. I mean, what, um, what are you hoping to get out of, the, uh, of this these series of meetings. Yeah, yeah, I think as we kind of committed to 2017 at Carrick's Biopharmaceuticals, uh, there's just a, a world of opportunity in front of us, right? As I mentioned, we came out of 2016 with some very positive momentum in the dialysis side, continue to bring that forward and kind of grow. And uh, really what we're doing now is talking a lot more about the opportunity in iron deficiency anemia. Uh, we talked about the patient population side. The interesting part from a company perspective is it really leverages our existing infrastructure beautifully. So our commercial team, for example, uh, the physicians that we're calling on today that are the big writers for phosphate binders are also the big writers for treatment of iron deficiency anemia. So we can leverage our complete you know, commercial infrastructure. The reimbursement levels will be uh, similar so we can you know, leverage all of our commercial infrastructure, the reimbursement we have in place, a lot of the samples we have in place, everything is there so that when this indication potentially comes, we can literally hit the ground running. And again, it's a, a significant amount of patients that are out there in need. So more than anything else, I think we want to make sure folks understand what this opportunity can do for patients, but also what it can do for us as a company going forward. Okay. Well, Greg, uh, thanks very much for, for stopping by. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks.